Welcome. It's been a couple of weeks. We're going to run the uh, the usual agenda here. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview with some shout outs and announcements. Um, and then say we have a couple of really awesome updates for you. So we have a brand strategy update that's going to come from ads. Um, Jack's going to give an update on the gateway verse and some of the public RPC things that are happening. And then last but not least, uh, we have Michael Rourke, who's going to give us another update on Grove um, and what's going on over on their end. And I know it's been a big week as far as news, um, a lot of things going on with the RPC. So we're going to make sure we have plenty of time to address that. So start with my usual shout outs. So I just want to say thanks to everybody. There's been a ton of engagement in mostly in the Poctopus Den, but around the community and in different channels. So I've been really excited to see all the conversation. Um, I appreciate the people that have stepped up, like Shane, who's called out some of the, we'll, we'll say, inconsistencies with what we want to be doing and what we're actually doing. And so these kind of things are all noticed, and we've been having discussions as well about like how we can do better. So um, continue to have those discussions, continue to offer criticism, let us know where we can do better. We are paying attention. Um, and I do want to do another little shout out for um, Tony and Jinx, who have kicked off the community time zone centric uh, calls. So I think Jinx, you had one a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you have plans for another one coming up, but I just want to say big thank you. You know, we see you stepping up and doing more and more, and we really appreciate it. I'm going to open the floor if anybody has any uh, any shout outs they want to give to anyone else. And everybody does such great work. I feel like this should be the easiest part of the, the whole the whole meeting, just picking a person who does great work and saying thanks. I do. Uh, I, I want to definitely shout out uh, both Adrian and Gabby, who have been uh, working together uh, to help uh, collaborate with uh, some, some cross-entity uh, marketing uh, efforts and comms efforts uh, between the various groups. Uh, I know Ads has spent a lot of time heads down over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, uh, working on strategy and kind of absorbing the the tone and tenor of uh, the level of comms that we have across the ecosystem today. And Gabby, who was not at all a uh, head of marketing type, you know, who was a head of product and, and sort of rapidly adapting to carrying that responsibility as part of her work, uh, big out to big up to both of them. Thank you, Jinx. Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I, again, a lot of the work that they do and that you do is done behind the scenes and you see the results of it, or sometimes you don't see any results, which is like, you know, no news is good news because they've been working hard to make sure things are going smoothly. So thank you for that shout out. Opportunity for anybody else to jump in and give a thanks. Well, I'll get into this later in the call, but a big shout out to Nodis um, for really stepping up and helping us um, make sure that we have some public endpoints available. Uh, for the ecosystem, um, they really turn things around uh, in, in in a short period, um, and it seems to be uh, all working smoothly. Um, and we've got some nice dashboards that we can look at um, to see that traffic coming through. So yeah, they really they really stepped up. Um, so shout out to them, and I'll give a bit more more details on that uh, later in the call as well. Thanks, Jack. I got one, Zach. Thanks, Mateo. Yeah, uh, breezy TM here from Stake Nodes. Uh, thanks for the jumping into the maintainer on testnet. We definitely need to drum up more support for that pop. So uh, already got the reply there. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, it's still open. We're looking for some more teams, but uh, thanks. You're the first submission in. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's a great call out. And a perfect segue into some of our announcements. Thanks, Mateo. So um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. So uh, as far as DAO proposals go, from our last meeting, which I realized was about three weeks ago, there were two pips that have been, um, that have passed. So Unleashing Potential of Pocket is a universal RPC provider and the potential of non-custodial node running. Those both passed, um, you know, with strong numbers. Uh, if you want to read about them, you can drop some links here in the chat. Uh, and then we have a current vote right now, which is going on. So the fix the max chains parameter. Um, and that is from Shane, who's, I believe you've actually done this, this uh, vote before. And, uh, I would say you've done a pretty good PR campaign this time to, to explain what it actually means. So people understand the, basically with the economics of it and what it's going to do for the ecosystem. So 
Um, if people want to go in and read about it or vote, that is PIP 34. And the voting's going to end on November 8th, so you've got about a week until that's going to close. Shane, do you want to say anything about it in the call? Do you want to do a quick overview or let people know what's important? Uh, well, happy to just make a correction. Um, uh, fix max change parameter is not the Gandalf uh, proposal, which establishes a parameter for it. So this is just to fix the actual uh, parameter itself, because right now it exists as a parameter, but it's not enforced. So what what good is a parameter that's not enforced? Um, and so this is a, this is actually fixing that parameter so that it functions and operates the way that the DAO has thought it operated this entire time, uh, and kind of and what the uh, initial design of it was meant to be. So it's just a quick fix. The PR is already there. It's ready for testing uh, with the next uh, pocket release. So this is just voting to say yes, we want to have this. Great. Thank you for the correction, Shane. Apologize for conflating the two, but yeah, so go in there and um, this seems like an easier one to vote yes for. So go on in and check that out, everybody. Um, again, the voting ends in about a week. Thanks, Shane. Here's also another, um, so moving on to the forum, Pops and Sockets. Um, Shane, you have another forum post, which is infusing pocket DNA with open source community standards. I don't know if you want to speak about that at all, but you have an opportunity now if you want to call anything out. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'd encourage people to post on the forum um, and, you know, any of their thoughts. Great. All right. Thanks, Shane. And then moving on, we have um, another post uh, introducing a secure way to transfer staked apps to new accounts. And that's from Toshi from Coder. I don't know if anybody from Coder is here today. I know it's a little early for them. Um, but another one that you all can go and, and read up on. And then the last one, um, Mateo, you just did a shout out for it, but um, we have an open priority, which is distributing the Morse testnet maintainer code. Um, so it's an opportunity for anybody who is interested to, um, to uh, I guess, fill out an application for that and potentially win um, the proposal and some money. So again, encourage everybody to go over and read up on that. And if it applies, go ahead and sign up. Um, as far as tech updates go, the big one would be that we have a public RPC migration to Nodes. Um, I think everybody's seen a lot of announcements coming out of both Grove uh, and PNF, and we're going to have a little bit more of a discussion about that later from Jack, but um, that went live yesterday. And so uh, if anybody does have any issues with that, please, please, please let us know. And if you see anybody in the community asking questions about it, point them to the, to the docs or to somebody over at... Um, at PNF, so that way we can help them along. Um, this event is actually out of date. I just found out that Dermot is supposed to be on a panel, but they had to cancel last minute um, about how privacy can shape the future of AI, but I'll give an update to the community so people can tune in there. And then next week, we have a citizenship Twitter space um, talking about our new creds and, and what it means to be um, a citizen with the PF, PNF community. And ads, I don't know if you have an update on when that's going to be. Otherwise, we can just leave it at, we'll get an update for next week. Yep, nothing yet. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to coordinate with Ben, who has done a little bit of travel and has been out with the flu. So just trying to get those timelines dialed in. But ads, while I have you, dun, 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 that segues <laughs> into our brand strategy update. So I'm going to let you take it away from here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I guess... Um, I'm now officially four months into to my time with Pocket. Um, there's been a lot that's been done in terms of marketing and brand, and I know it's a topic that a lot of people have a point of view on, have um, you know, have things they'd like to see, things they'd like to see change, things they'd like to see more of. Um, I would love to to hear more about that from everyone to facilitate that conversation. Um, there will be a forum post that I'm working on right now that will either go today or tomorrow that will have a, a bit of a review of some of the stuff that we've tried over the last few months, um, some things that worked well, other things that didn't work as well. Um, we have, you know, I had to switch into execution mode to, to help kind of try to build a bit of momentum ahead of Wrap Pocket. Um, over the last kind of week, kind of stepping out of that a little bit just to make sure that the website rebuild and the technical docs rebuild kind of are on track. 
as part of the website rebuild, there's been a very kind of, um, I guess that tied in really well with the strategy stuff that we kicked off in August. Um, coming back and grounding and target audience insight, there's been a lot of learnings built up over that um, as we've gone through the last month or so. Um, as I say, all of that will be shared transparently on the forum. Um, anybody who has a point of view would love to hear it. Uh, design by committee is not known for um, to be an effective approach. Uh, so what we're doing is we are putting our best foot forward based on the target audience insight, target audience research, um, a little bit of initial user testing, and then we're going to iterate and optimize from there. So anybody who feels like they have a point of view and would like to make sure it's heard, it's not too late. <laughs> there will be tons of time for that. Um, but in order to move with velocity and to do that effectively, um, we've been working in advance. Uh, if we go to the next slide, I will share just a few headlines. Um, some of the things that you will see in those documents, we've been working on how do we communicate who we are and what we are. Uh, you'll see that this is in a different visual style to the slides. Um, I will explain more about that in a couple of, a couple of screens. But, you know, this trying to kind of shift our position um, to clarify the distinction between us and our gateways, to clarify our, our point of kind of differentiation with other RPC providers and try to take hold of that opportunity to be that base layer technology that underpins multiple gateways, multiple RPCs. Um, so this is the line we're using at the moment. It's the RPC base layer. The thinking behind that is that we underpin and connect the Web3 ecosystem. We embody dependability, sta stability. We're supportive, neutral to what's built on top of us. The role of gateways is to optimize aspects of that and provide frictionless access points to it. And all of that is so that builders can build their best and without disruptions. There's a lot more thinking behind this, um, but this is kind of the, the headline kind of brand essence, I guess. Um, if we go to the next one, Zach. Uh, so this kind of comes into the visual identity aspect of it. Um, so we are changing the look and feel quite significantly to try to communicate that um, that kind of, I guess, very grounded, very stable, uh, no-nonsense brand um, where we can kind of blend, you know, minimalism, industrialism, where we will shift our tone of voice slightly. We will make sure that we embrace a data-centric approach in our communications much more. Uh, we will try to ground things in numbers, in facts. We will try to speak as simply as we can. Um, the style guide that we're using going forward is the plain language guide. Um, there will be a, you know, that we've been looking at kind of brand personality stuff and, and we're kind of looking at embracing that combination of an everyman archetype, which is about kind of making things very accessible, very down to earth, very grounded, very straightforward. And a sage archetype where we are blending that with making those kind of more complex concepts sometimes and making them very clean and simple and easy to understand, embracing that kind of, you know, the fact that we've been around the block for quite a while now. We are pioneering in this field. We have been for some time taking that knowledge and experience, but making it very accessible and very clear. Um, shifting to a very minimal aesthetic. Uh, you can go on ahead, Zach. Um, you can go to the next one if you want. And then kind of just really trying to think, okay, well, having, you know, with that simplicity in mind that how do we make our ecosystem feel simple? We're playing around with different ways of communicating this. We've been talking with with some of the guys uh, in Nodes and Grove just to kind of really try to understand the distinction. There's a little anecdote that seems to help people when we share it with them. I don't know if it's useful to you guys. But basically, we're the base layer gateways are how you access it. And the idea is that in this kind of gateway verse model that we are increased, you know, we're quickly moving towards this position where we can be decentralized all the way through um, as opposed to kind of centralized RPC providers or even kind of monolithic decentralized RPC providers um, that this will enable us to have more innovation um, where gateways can innovate on, on utility um, and on, on serving the end customers where the protocol and, and the node network can really focus on providing that base layer of performance and particularly kind of some of the advantages around uptime, um, 
and some of the work that's been done around latency. Uh, so that's kind of, this is how we're starting to try to frame the ecosystem. Um, this will help us as we go out and try to headhunt um, exciting new gateways uh, for a post-Shannon era. Um, and then if you keep going, Zach, I think there should be a roadmap. No, the roadmap. Where's the roadmap? Um, it's showing in my version of the slides, but I'm not Let sure. Let me just refresh. I might have an older. Okay. Sorry, guys, but I know that roadmap was something people had asked me for. Yeah, it's the second one there. I thought it should have appeared earlier. Sorry. Okay. That's my fault for not refreshing. Back hmm. to back one. Oh, here. Got yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, again, this will be in more detail in the forum, and then we'll be more space to have this conversation because I know this isn't what everybody came here for today, but it just gives you a sense of what's been completed. So we've done a lot of target audience research. We've done some initial brand strategy development. We did the tactical campaign around Rat Pocket in October. Uh, we've been working with ENCODE on developer workshops. We've had some experiments around community hubs, things like Twitter spaces, some of the narrative content we've been trying and some of the partnerships. That has all carried into what we're doing now, where the brand is close to being defined, at least in an in initial phase. The visual identity is being looked at. The website is being rebuilt. And that should be, we should have the first version of that online uh, probably two weeks time, um, just under two weeks time. The technical docs are re being reworked. They should be available around the same time frame. We're expanding our partnerships. And then next, we're moving into thinking about gateway marketing, some exciting ideas we have around dev-centric tooling to really kind of live that refreshed identity, um, some thoughts around content marketing, social, um, and more on partnerships and events. Um, and then the ideas in future, we will come back to this idea of headless brands. So. Yeah, just to give you a few little slides from from the strategy stuff that you will see in the forum and invite anybody who's got any burning questions they want to share now and otherwise, you know where I am. Thank you, Ads. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, I think there's been a, obviously a ton of work behind the scenes and you've had a lot of fires to fight. So I'm really excited to to see like a new identity and help separate kind of uh, old PNI and PNF uh, a little bit further as well. It feels, you know, it's a base layer. This feels really directionally aligned. Does anybody have any questions? You can put them in chat. You can unmute. No? Time to just give you applause and there we go. Thank you, Ads. All right. Well, next up, we have Jack to talk about the gateway verse and the public RPC update. OK, um, I think I may start with uh, public RPC just because I think it's going to be a bit of a shorter one. Um, but yeah, as I'm sure you're all aware uh, this week we made a change to our public RPC. Um, uh, it was migrated from being maintained by Grove, our first gateway, formerly known as Pocket Network Inc. Uh, to Nodi's, our second gateway, who has uh, just recently integrated uh, with the network. So um, there's a few there was a few reasons uh, for this migration. Um, uh, we were uh, the the endpoints being powered by Grove were seeing a lot of traffic uh, that was uh, basically exhibiting behavior of of um, of being large large users. Um, uh, uh, doing a lot of traffic on on like production level applications. Um, ultimately, uh, the uh, Grove had a committee to not doing any kind of IP tracking or anything like that that would enable uh, rate limiting to take place. So um, ultimately, we had to, uh, uh, and then obviously also Grove are pursuing a very exciting enterprise led strategy. Um, which they published on Tuesday with some really exciting news around uh, partnerships with projects like Impura. Uh, I think they're going to talk about that later on the call. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it just got to a point where the public endpoints um, were incurring a lot of expense uh, for Grove and were not really compatible with their strategy. Um, 
uh, moving forward. So we we had to come up with a solution, and and ultimately Nodi stepped up and were able to to provide uh, alternative public endpoints, um, and and things are going really smoothly there. Um, I can give you uh, an update on the traffic that we're seeing there. Um, we are seeing, as of the last twenty four hours, uh, a little over three million uh, daily relays so far coming through those endpoints. Uh, so. There is attrition, uh, I think, on uh, the migration between uh, the Grove endpoints and the Nodes endpoints. Um, we weren't entirely sure on how much of that traffic um, was going to be coming from those larger applications. So it's, it's hard to tell for sure um, exactly how much attrition we're seeing. And I think we're going to see... Um, I think we're going to see that that level of traffic come come through gradually over time as more people become aware of the change that has taken place. So um, we'll be providing more updates on that as time goes on, um, and we are in the process as well of getting making sure that the Nodi's endpoints are listed everywhere. Uh, everywhere the endpoints are listed, we have a, a pending uh, PR in the Chainlist uh, .org repo that is uh, looking to. Um, make sure that all of the Nodi's endpoints are listed there. So, um, so yeah, watch this space. But it's all going pretty smoothly so far. Um, most of the traffic. Uh, but one thing to note here is that um, the traffic that's being served by the endpoints um, are initially served by Nodi's uh, centralized nodes, and then gradually migrated over to uh, the pocket network. Uh, the we kind of agreed at the beginning that we need to do a gradual uh, transition here so that nodes can monitor uh, the quality of service uh, on those endpoints uh, and 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 ramp it up to a hundred percent being served by pocket network uh, once it's established that there's not going to be any uh, disruptions to that service based by uh, users of those endpoints. So uh, yeah, that that covers it pretty much for. Uh, for the endpoint stuff, um, there is an announcement uh, in the announcements channel that is worth looking at. Um, there's a few FAQs in there, so if you do have questions about this, um, it's worth checking there. There might be um, there may be answers there, but also um, feel free to leave a comment here in the chat as well, and and I'll get to that. Um, Okay, and then I guess uh, that leads on to Gatewayverse, uh, which is a related uh, topic here. Um, as I mentioned, Nodi's our second gateway, have really stepped up uh, in providing these public endpoints, and this is enabled in part by the fact that um, they were able to execute an integration with um, with Pocket Network um, in in a pretty timely fashion. So. Um, before I go into, I'm going to be providing uh, an update on, on on some of the work that has that's, uh, been delivered uh, has taken place in the last couple of months, as well as what we're what we have coming coming down the pipeline. Um, also, all of this will be posted uh, to the Gatewayverse forum thread uh, soon, uh, so you'll also be able to to read in more detail uh, all of this uh, and and also take the time and digest and. Uh, leave a response in the forum if you have if you have any questions about any of this stuff. So, um, but before I uh, dive into uh, a recap on the work, I just uh, or um, an update on on the work that's being completed. I just want to recap a little bit on um, basically the vision of Gatewayverse, the goals that we have um, for pursuing that keystone, um, to set some context for for the work that has been done. Um, so the goals of Gatewayverse can be summarized. Uh, in my view, and do three prongs. Uh, number one is to bootstrap a second gateway. Um, ultimately, uh, when we first proposed Gatewayverse, uh, there was a large dependency on Grove, formerly PNI, uh, for bringing in relays, bringing in revenue, and bootstrapping a second gateway ultimately helps the ecosystem take the next big step towards diversifying where Pocket is getting its protocol revenue from. Uh, so that's number one, a huge, a huge aspect of this. Uh, we're not just funding um, development of a stack. We're also, we're also funding uh, the, uh, the growth of a, um, a, a fully fledged business, really, that is going to be uh, selling to customers and bringing on relays and ultimately bringing that revenue back to the network. And the second key thing was uh, funding research and development 
of an open source gateway stack that would then enable us to reduce the onboarding friction for any other gateways that are coming into our ecosystem. Uh, and through this, uh, to be able to foster an ecosystem in which there is a lot of gateway innovation taking place. One of the things that inspired us on this was looking at uh, the supply side of Pocket Network and seeing all of the innovation and co-opetition co that was taking place with nodes and imagining what that could look like if that same dynamic was applied to the gateway uh, side of things and uh, seeing the potential uh, quality improvements um, and growth in relays that we would see come from that. So we are basically looking to kickstart um, the demand side ecosystem for, for Pocket. Um, so um, so what has been done towards that? So um, first up, the agreement with Nodis was signed on August 22nd, and we made the first grant on September 1st. So um, as far as like full speed uh, working on this, um, we've had about two months uh, from the beginning of September until now. Um, the main focus for the foundation uh, through these last two months has been supporting Nodis and uh, all the operational stuff that's involved in removing any barriers to Pocket becoming a multi-gateway ecosystem. So this is like working with lawyers to finalize a standard operator agreement for all gateways. Um, this is um, uh, liaising with Grove to keep them on track to rebranding uh, so that they're on a level footing with, uh, with Nodis and other gateways. And then a big part here was ultimately uh, freeing up app stakes that we could provide to gateways like Nodis. Um, there was a lot of work that went on behind the scenes working with Grove to try to make some app stakes available for other gateways. Um, make sure that Grove is not depending on those app stakes for traffic and that we can we can take them off their hands and um, make them available to other gateways. Um, and also some, some uh, thinking around how can we securely uh, refresh these app stakes into being a new set of keys um, so that we can provide those keys to gateways and, and they can be assured that only they are the ones that are able to send traffic. Because ultimately all of these gateways are uh, being charged uh, based on the relays going through their app stakes. Um, so this was really important. So um, we worked with Coder to scope out um, the app transfer feature, which they published this week to the forum. So. Um, that's uh, that's an essential proposal. I'm going to reply to that um, uh, with some context from from my side, but that's an essential proposal for for keeping Gateways uh, moving forward um, smoothly. Um, so that's re really been all the operational stuff that the foundation has has worked on. I think what you're you're all more interested in though is um, the work on the integration um, with no uh, Nodes and Pocket. Um, there's been a lot of work that's gone into this um, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so just as a high level overview, uh, Nodis did complete the integration with Pocket uh, by October 31st this week. Um, this was the target that was communicated um, in the forum. And I'm pleased to say that we, we hit that target and Nodis hit that target um, just in time for uh, the November 1st public endpoint date. Um, and uh, we are expecting that if, if everything with the public endpoint rollout goes smoothly, that Nodis will also be de deploying Pocket in their platform for all users um, uh, very shortly. So um, yeah, that's all very exciting. Um, and then uh, what has gone into that? Um, so they have built their own custom uh, Golang client for interacting with the protocol. Ultimately. Uh, Nodi is built uh, using Go, and they need a Golang client to be able to interact with the protocol. So signing requests, broadcasting these requests to nodes, um, and so on. Uh, and they're uh, experimenting with fast JSON and fast HTTP uh, to optimize the latency of that client. Um, Pocket Go as an SDK was ultimately too bloated for what they needed, so they they did some work to to build a custom client, and this will. Um, this will feed into to work on the open source stack. Um, they've also set up their own dedicated uh, dispatcher management, uh, load balancing between Nodes and Pocket, uh, some basic uh, QoS checks uh, within their systems, including height checks, latency checks, and 
um, a simple node registry. Uh, and then a lot of work on observability uh, of both backend and front end. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, data on uh, the success rates of, of relays, uh, uh, requests per second, per chain, et cetera, uh, so that Node is uh, able to be alerted when there's issues and they can maintain a high standard of QoS. Um, so this is all, uh, and this is actually the work that has, has fed into uh, us at the foundation being able to provide with Grafana dashboard showing us all of the traffic uh, that's going through the public endpoints, where that traffic's coming from, which chains that traffic is going to, et cetera. So um, the, the, the good thing as well to note here is that their work on observability is all using open source tech um, and is ultimately going to be a key component of the gateway stack uh, that, is, that is going to be worked on. So um, let me get onto that then. Um, so I think there's one thing uh, we would we touched on like open source values um, earlier in the call. Uh, Shane has been talking about that this week in the forum. And I think it's worth addressing this um, because I think um, the we like between the foundation and Nodis and and, and the ecosystem broadly. Um, uh, I don't think we did enough at the beginning of this project to set expectations it look like to be open sourcing this work uh when are we open sourcing work um and so on and and this is something i've been uh since, since shane has brought these issues up this is something i've had a lot of conversations with with blade about um and uh i'm hoping to provide everyone with more clarity on this in the forum um and we can keep this discussion going as well um but basically uh, the focus for Nodis, based on the timelines that have uh, that have been provided to them or uh, asked of them, um, based on like a deadline of October thirty first uh, launch of uh, the integration, um, and also the requirement that like they also need to be doing work on just building out uh, all the front ends and payments and and building um, uh, selling to to potential clients and so on. Um, Initially, the integration was done or has been done directly into Nodi's code base. Um, so they've been working on a direct integration into the code base with all of these features that I mentioned. So Golang client, custom Golang client, dispatch management, QoS check, observability, as all well, uh, embedded directly within their code base, uh, which includes um, all of the the other stuff um, that that Nodi's is working on. Um, um, uh, uh, for the Nodis DLB uh, project, uh, and not just this uh, integration with Pocket. Um, the sort of the development philosophy here is that focusing on um, the integration uh, directly enables faster bootstrapping of the gateway, and then also uh, in the process, uh, Nodis is able to develop the experience and a deeper understanding of what it's taking to operate a gateway and to integrate with Pocket, and then to use this experience to build um, a modular open source gateway stack. So there's quite an exciting vision for uh, what this gateway stack looks like. Um, one thing to note here is um, the initial sort of uh, requirements for what Nodis uh, should open source uh, were very basically. Um, uh, and an implementation of a relay client specification. So end-to-end -end staking and sending a relay and uh, an, an open source implementation of a QoS framework. Um, based on the work that they've been doing um, and, and learning what, kind of what's involved in running a gateway and what they think other gateways will, will want, uh, the vision for that gateway stack has matured um, and the scope of the technology that they're planning to build has expanded from being a bare bones, a bare bones integration with a relay client spec and a QoS framework into a modular architecture uh, with uh, uh, powered by gRPC, uh, with Docker deployments, with like uh, plugin capabilities um, that will ultimately give developers uh, an easy solution for deploying a gateway uh, using Docker. Um, but then also the ability to pick and choose which modular services they want to use. Um, and then the thing that's really exciting to me 
is um, having a flexible plugin architecture uh, feeds directly into one of our goals for this project, which is to foster an ecosystem of innovation in the Gatewayverse. Um, we can envision, for example, having the standard gateway stack and then the community, uh, because it's open source, is able to build uh, plugins for, for example, uh, federating POS checks, having like a shared a shared node registry, uh, and any other kinds of innovations that could take place. So um, that's kind of like the vision for the gateway stack, which is which is very exciting to me. Um, uh, and uh, the the work on this is expected to start in November on November thirteenth. Uh, so just short of two weeks from now, um, once the direct uh, pocket integration is stabilized uh, and, and Nodis has made sure that like the QoS of all the traffic going through pocket from their gateway is, um, is, is, is performing to a standard that we'd expect. Um, so that's, where, that's the work that's been done so far and, and, and what's, what's coming with the open source stack. Um, the, it should be noted, the open source stack uh, will be developed in the open uh, uh, as soon as that work uh, starts. Um, so everyone will be able to follow along the progress in GitHub. Uh, we're going to have more frequent updates in the forum uh, and community calls. Um, and uh, we're expecting, I've been speaking about this a lot with Blade, we're expecting that the stack would be ready for onboarding by early adopters in December. And then, um, uh, reached a V1 uh, status um, uh, by the first weeks of January. Um, and at that point, that's when we'll have a, an easy Docker deployment of a gateway, uh, fully a, a stable open source stack that covers everything from uh, app stake management, uh, QoS, observability, um, and so on. Um, so that's the that's the the development side of things, and then uh, on the PNF side of things, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work uh, this quarter, uh, working towards this stack being um, available for for gateways to onboard uh, quite frictionlessly. Uh, so we are preparing to deploy a headhunting strategy. Um, we've been defining our ideal gateway personas and uh, looking to meet with high value gateways. Um, at DevConnect, for example, in two weeks, um, to meet with them, to understand their needs, <clears throat> and uh, to basically bring them into an onboarding pipeline, uh, so that we can, uh, so that they can become gateways uh, as soon as as soon as uh, uh, work for their time, their, their development timelines, um, and as soon as the stack is is ready for them. Um, we're also going to launch a public application process as well. Uh, for anyone interested in becoming a gateway operator, we want to make sure that anyone interested is able to make their interest known and, and we can speak to them. Um, there's a lot of work that we're going to be doing to prepare to onboard gateway operators around um, uh, uh, pitch decks and uh, uh, ecosystem support offerings and economic models to help them understand what their break even will be when becoming a gateway operator, etc. Um, a lot more marketing is going to go into uh, into Gatewayverse, um, helping establish consistent brand guidelines, uh, marketing guidelines for gateways, um, and then this one other area that we're that is kind of an open area, uh, and that we're open to discussing with with anyone who's interested, um, is that um, we'll also be evaluating uh, using uh, era allocation towards grant opportunities for. A parallel uh, development work that would complement um, the open source stack uh, that Nodis is building. Um, ideas that I have, for example, are uh, QoS plugins, uh, 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 I, uh, ideas around federating, um, federating these things, uh, dispatcher management solutions, um, gateway front end components, etc. So, um, if anyone's interested in, in working in this area. Um, these are things that we are considering. Um, we don't have all the ideas, so um, there's a good chance that you'll have ideas that, that we didn't think of. So yeah, um, uh, our door is open, and if you want to speak about this, um, more about all of this stuff, uh, I'll be posting an update to the forum, uh, the existing Gateway Verse forum thread. Um, 
and yeah, we'll be available in DMs uh, uh, on community calls to talk about opportunities uh, in the Gatewayverse. Wow, Jack, thank you so much. That was a huge update. Really appreciate it. Um, we do have a question in the chat, but in the in the spirit of time, I'm going to pass it to Mike, and you can just uh, answer in the chat if that's okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so Jack, if anybody does have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, and last but not least, we have an update from Grove on some of the things going on in their ecosystem. Mike, I don't know if you're available here. Yeah, yeah, right awesome. here. Um, Welcome. Cool. Yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, uh, amazing, amazing updates from uh, everyone has spoken before. Uh, yeah, so just a bit on, on Grove. I know we've been a bit quiet. Uh, a lot's been going on behind the scenes. Super happy to have shared uh, uh, some of our partners and customers that we're working with earlier this week. Um, a part of that blog post is really kind of highlighting uh, uh, that it's pretty clear from, from our vantage point, I think Pocket Network's vantage point, that the world really is moving towards settling their traffic on decentralized infrastructure. Uh, we're seeing this from uh, the amount of community members here that actually want to run their own gateways. We're seeing this from our own customers that are uh, basically reselling pocket traffic today. Uh, and we're seeing this even from centralized providers who uh, many of the largest ones are uh, actually not even operating their own nodes or starting to off, uh, offload their own infrastructure uh, from, from running their nodes uh, in, terms of the, in terms of the RPC side. Uh, so for me, it's only a matter of time uh, uh, over these next few years that we start to see more and more traffic settle on protocols like Pocket. And you know, to, to even add more to that, right? You've got other protocols that are that are being built today that are uh, inspired uh, uh, from Pocket in many ways, right? So um, that's extremely extremely exciting for us. Uh, I would expect uh, uh, some more announcements from Grove over these next couple of weeks and months before the end of the new year. Uh, related to, to a few other things that we're really, really excited about. Um, and also, I'll be in, in Istanbul uh, as well at DevConnect uh, over these next few weeks. Uh, I'll be speaking and participating in a few events with some of our partners as well. Uh, and I'll, I would also expect uh, some some fun Twitter spaces and shouts to, to echo uh, Jinx's shout to, to Gabby and, and Ads. Uh, they've done a lot of work uh, on the marketing side, and I would expect to hear uh, more from us on that side of things. Um, you know, I, I know we've seen some of the some of the changes on the public sales dashboard. Uh, uh, to be honest, the, the sales team sales team has been absolutely killing it. Uh, really, it's been a journey of of building the new portal uh, and then migrating the new portal, and really starting to see the the benefits of that late uh, late Q3 and and now into into Q4. Uh, it's really been much easier to close deals since the new portal. Um, and, and talking about that, I mean, the, really the main focus that the team has today is, is about quality of service. Uh, we're basically just focusing on that until we hit what we're calling uh, diminishing returns uh, on quality of service. And just for, for some context, when we first uh, launched the portal in the summer, we were around 99, uh, uh, two, two nines and a five of, of uptime. Uh, we define uptime as either a failed request or a dropped call. And now we're up to three nines and a five of uptime. And I think uh, 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 we're going to be able to get to, to four nines and, and maybe even past that. So uh, I'm super, super excited about that. And, and that's what I mean by diminishing returns at some point. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, to, to keep working on it. But uh, for us uh, uh, and for Nodis as well and for any other gateway, uh, the thing that matters the most is making sure that the users and the customers have have the best uh, and the world class, the, the, the most world class quality of service possible. And that's really what the team is focusing on uh, uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, just to touch a little bit, uh, just to add to, to what Jack was talking about on the public endpoints, uh, those things are freaking expensive. Uh, most of the traffic was spam. Uh, we just had a conversation today about how there are some folks that are still sending traffic uh, uh, to these endpoints uh, and it's still incurring, despite them being shut down, they're still having to, to respond to some of these things. And it's basically, uh, uh, you know, a, a good use case of this is like people running bots and having it on some server somewhere and just forgetting about it, right? And uh, since the burn has been implemented, 
uh, not just us, but nodes in any other gateway is going to be very highly incentivized to make sure that uh, the traffic that comes on pocket is uh, uh, the most legitimate traffic possible uh, and that it's that most of it is paid for, right? Um, you know, we still have our free tier. I think it's important that we have um, rate limited public endpoints. Uh, but just for that context, I mean, it's really, uh, uh, it, it's a lot of spam traffic that people will uh, absolutely abuse these these public endpoints, uh, uh, just generally. So, um, uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, pretty pretty exciting for us uh, in terms of you know, just, just just making things easier for us and, and also uh, making sure that the, that the network has uh, the best quality traffic that's being that's being settled on it. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be announcing some other. Uh, we're going to be having some other announcements before the end of the year that I'm extremely excited about. Uh, I don't know if uh, Olshansky is here. I know he's in the call, uh, uh, but the protocol team has been absolutely killing it. If you're paying attention to the GitHub, um, they are just shipping incredibly fast and uh, just really reinforcing, uh, I think, the decision that, that we made to, to move over, uh, to, to experiment over here to, to, to Celestia. Uh, well, Sam, I don't know if, if you're here, uh, if you're able to, to, to elaborate a little bit more, but uh, uh, please uh, jump in there if you'd like. Yeah, uh, thanks for the handoff. Let me jump in. Uh, I'm at the gym, so if there's background noise, let me know. Um, but basically, as an update on from the protocol side of things, uh, back in September, we decided to make the decision uh, to move from building our own custom L1 stack uh, to moving to a role built on top of Celestia uh, using Rollkit. And things have just been moving really, really fast. Uh, the protocol team has been just killing it, working really hard. Uh, we are setting up our DevNet literally this week. Um, there's still a lot of work ahead, but everything's running. We are aiming to have our first end-to-end -end relay uh, going through our DevNet uh, mid next week and sometime in the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing some really interesting work around uh, pushing our data to the limits because one of the key reasons why we're even building uh, a major upgrade to the protocol is to enable permissionless applications uh, and to enable gate for, uh, gate, gateway verse in a completely permissionless and process manner so that's kind of the high level update. Um, we are, everything's open source, a roadmap, our source code, uh, and hopefully sometime in the next few weeks, we'll have a dedicated call with the community, with the community uh, just showing how everything's running, how everything's working. Uh, and if anyone's interested, just uh, feel free to reach out on Discord. Thanks a lot. And answer your questions through the mobile. And just a quick shout out as well. I, I did. I didn't say anything at the very beginning, uh, Zach. But uh, if you didn't see, uh, Olshansky and Ramiro uh, got their first citation on uh, the relay mining implemented. Uh, uh, the re the relay mining paper being implemented, and what Olshansky just talked about was exactly that paper uh, being uh, uh, implemented on Fanon. So, uh, uh, kind of taking. Um, theory and, and actually putting that into production is incredibly impressive and, and, and exciting. So, and uh, yeah, that's basically the 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 most of the the Grove side of things. Um, uh, we'll be going into next year. We'll also be be working on on open sourcing uh, uh, what we're working on as well. Uh, but uh, we'll definitely be be talking a little bit more about that as we get closer to the new year and, and early in the next year. So. Um, with that, you know, we, we only have a few minutes left in the call, so I don't know if anyone else has, has questions or anything like that, but happy to, to, to jump in anything. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Olshansky, for jumping in. Um, if anybody has any questions, now's a great time. Chat, we're here. If anybody has okay. links to... Oh, go on, Jinx. Yeah, I've got three uh, that I sort of saved up over a couple of segments, so hopefully I can uh, um, try and run through them pretty quickly. Um, Jack, uh, any any sort of update at all that you might be able to provide on uh, the status of uh, exchange listing conversations? It's something that gets asked in the community a lot, so if there was sort of an official position on progress or outlook, that'd be great. 
Yeah, so um, I think the important context that, that, that people need to know from exchanges is that, I mean, there's a, there's a few things here. So ultimately, uh, exchange listings are not just a matter of like speaking to an exchange nicely um, and then and then making it happen. Uh, ultimately, exchanges are looking at our volume. They're looking at um, uh, like how healthy the market is looking for pocket, um, and even just things like uh, our roadmap and uh, how how development is going. Um, uh, all the exchanges have lengthy um, forms that you need to fill out uh, with all of these details. Um, so ultimately, all of the work that we've been doing on. Um, really uh, bolstering the fundamentals of pocket um, and, and setting everything on the right track, both uh, like, like across the, all of the keystones that the foundation has, um, has prioritized um, around revenue and Gateverse and wrap pocket uh, and so on, um, uh, have all been indirectly uh, working towards um, increasing the odds of a successful exchange listing uh, with a with a high quality exchange. Um, we la- we launched Rat Pocket last month, and already uh, we're in a much better position for exchange listings um, because um, if you look at the liquidity that Rat Pocket is seeing and some of the volume that it's seeing um, uh, recently, uh, it's actually surpassing uh, the exchanges. Uh, um, the uh, just the, the, it's, it's clear that the convenience and the UX of Uniswap uh, is is really allowing that uh, market to to kind of uh, uh, play out with, without frictions. Um, uh, so that's a that's a really solid example of how like um, a lot of the work that we can do on improving things for Pocket um, can feed into um, uh, the uh, helping us with these conversations. Um, Wrap pocket as well. It's going to be a lot easier for an exchange to list uh, because it's an ERC twenty. Uh, they can just basically um, uh, click a button uh, to make it happen. Whereas with pocket, they're going to have to to, to learn to go into our docs and learn how to integrate and like get a get like nodes and, and all that all that stuff. Um, there's 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 a reason why a lot of the the tokens listed on exchanges are ERC twenties. Um, so. Uh, Basically, um, the update that we provided in the, in the last cycle uh, reporting uh, listing conversations were on pause uh, until November um, because of all of these all of this work that had to be done. And honestly, it was basically a case of like if we don't if Rat Pocket is not live yet, and some of these key things haven't been delivered yet, uh, those conversations are not really going to go anywhere. Um, it's with the with the tier ones um, that that we are really uh, looking to to get. So um, now that we have Rat Pocket, and now that a lot of these improvements are happening, and we're seeing all the success on growth side, and uh, sentiment is generally improving, uh, those conversations are going to be a lot easier. Um, so um, uh, I hope that's not a non-answer, um, but uh, that is to say that yeah, we've we've set the foundations up, and and we are uh, reaching out through a couple um and um and yeah it's just a case of um if, if things keep improving for pocket it will it will happen and and we'll 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 keep making sure that we're in a position to uh uh to to get those listings happening as soon as as soon as possible beautiful and i don't think that's a non-answer at all just that we haven't heard anything from the foundation definitively on that anytime recently so it was good to get an update on it the second one i'm going to try and move fast because i know we're short on time uh, dermot talked recently about three more gateways being potentially in progress uh one of the things that was noted recently was that both of the current gateways are in the u.s and of course with trying to have uh, broad access to a, an unstoppable protocol part of that has to be uh you know more global gateway access so are any of those uh, upcoming gateways, you know, overseas somewhere, or are they also U.S. based? Uh, there are a couple that we've been speaking to that are not U.S. based. Um, we're, yeah, we're, we're 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 taking a pretty broad approach to looking at potential gateways, not just like segmenting by regions, but also like uh, like there's there's a lot of really interesting categories uh, that we can be targeting. Uh, we've been speaking 
with like, for example, um, de like developer communities and um, uh, uh, like uh, organizations that you wouldn't expect would be interested in running a gateway have approached us and are saying uh, that that like this is the, this is appealing to them. And actually, when you think more about it, it's uh, like it's actually quite exciting. It's like like there's a unique niche here that can be capitalized on. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, dancing around names, um, but yeah, we're going to provide more updates on that. There's there's there are a few that we're speaking to, um, and yeah, over the next two months, we're really looking to to turn those conversations into more formal uh, uh, partnership discussions, um, and really looking to onboard them as soon as as soon as possible. Beautiful. And given the time, I'll skip my last question. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, Jack. Anybody else have any other questions? It seems like we had a little combo in the the chat here. All right. I think being that we're right at time, this is a great spot to wrap it up. Um, big thank you to Ads, Jack, and Mike. I appreciate you all uh, showing up and giving us updates. And thank you to the community and everybody who's here. Really appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, please check those forum posts way in. Wait for the pocket news update that's coming out on Twitter. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks.